Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for Black Clover episode 140. So, last time we had Vanessa heading back uh, to her old home in order to try to learn something new, but didn't didn't really learn anything new other than the fact that she needs to train with her own power, and, and it's her own strength that she needs to improve, rather than trying to get some some secret magics from her her homeland and then she headed back to her real home to have a drink with the Emmy. It was a fun episode. Um I mean ultimately when you look at it that way, she didn't really learn much other than like motivation, but it's similar to Zora's episode, which I loved where at the end he pretty much like didn't get any stronger. He just was like, oh time to go back and train kind of thing. So some of these are the characters like finding ways to get stronger and then some of them seem to be uh them finding the the motivation they need to go and get stronger kind of thing. So I was laughing a little bit here before I started recording because I opened up my notes and uh the way I like formatted them was I wrote down like Vanessa serious so, like cuz I just that was just in the start of the episode where I was enjoying the fact that she like wasn't drinking and stuff like that and she was taking this this training very seriously and then uh, right next to that I wrote down washboard because of Diamante's washboard and when I because I, I write with my stylus um, on on my tablet here and uh, I didn't when I converted it to text and then edited it. I usually put a comma between the different like points that I make, but I didn't do it this time. So I looked down at my notes and read Vanessa serious washboard, and I just laughed a little bit because I'm pretty sure there's like maybe they do it in America too. But I feel like I hear a lot of anime jokes of like when they're making fun of a girl with like a flat chest or whatever they call it. They call her like a washboard or whatever. I feel like I've heard that somewhere, so then I just started laughing, because, I mean, clearly Vanessa isn't, but, uh, yeah, it was just, it was just funny. But anyway, yeah, I'm excited to see where we go next, which, I mean, we've been on a spree of following different Black Bulls, uh, members, so, who's next? Alright, let's find out, shall we? We're gonna start here in five, four, three, two, one, now. Yes. I decided to record a little bit earlier than uh, the the day before I normally record, and then I was also too lazy to cut my hair, so it's starting to grow in a little bit. Usually I'm a very lazy, and since I just work from home anyway, I cut my hair usually right before I start recording this, and then my haircut lasts the... Uh, like four days of the week that I record shows and uh yeah I decided not to oh he's oh my god he's in like a little outfit look at him in his overalls I guess they're not exactly overalls overalls like go all the way down to your like pants right I like his old denim outfit though Are we following Yulius this episode? By the way, you guys might hear my dog uh, snoring in the background. Apologies if you do. She's just loud and sleepy. Mmm. Some favors. What are the favors? A favor for Julius. That's so funny. I literally just wrote down favors for Julius. <laughs> Makes sense, I suppose. Wait, so are we following Marx then? Doing the favors for Julius? That'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I was uh I was a little bored, so I decided to uh to record a little earlier, I'm kind of in between, because usually when I have spare time, I either I'm recording shows or I'm playing games, and I find like a good balance of that to maintain my sanity, 
Uh, but I'm kind of between games. I'm kind of bored of everything at the moment, waiting for something new. So I decided I'd record, maybe start getting a little bit ahead, because uh, the next anime season coming up is a doozy. We have uh, a lot of stuff that I want to watch, so I'll be starting some extra show slots and everything, which I guess it falls in a good time with me being bored, but if I can also get ahead a little bit on some of these shows, it, it'll it be nice. Training. Nice. I like that our characters are growing in the sense that she can now, like, hit her targets. And it's not just, like, a meme that she can't hit targets anymore. Because I could see some shows keeping that a meme. Jeez. Look at our jacked boy. Oh no! It's a uh, slime girly. What's her name? Sally. There we go. Are they like not in prison or something? Yeah. Oh. Sh I see. Magic item research lab special specially appointed researcher. Makusa North? Was that his name? Interesting. Experiment on you guys. I'll allow it. <laughs> <clears throat> he just rips off his clothes. <laughs> oh my god, who gave her a scalpel? Hmm. <laughs> They're all back at the same time. See ya! <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy. And now she's free to do as she wishes. Nope, it's not far enough, buddy. You're about to get slimed. Jeez! It's a massive needle! I guess it's for her monster. Hmm. Oh no. This reminds me of the beginning of the Charmy episode. Oh 
Oh my god. Oh my god, of course. That's how they get caught. Well, guess it didn't work on them either. Oh no, luring with alcohol! <laughs> Fenrir. Oh no, Charmy. Of course, Charmy just goes just right for it. No hesitation. <laughs> oh no, it's a trail of them. Oh my god. Bakatsu. She's too distracted by the alcohol to know that anything even happened? Is that what happened? Oh my god. It just pooped her out! Now Charmy knows what it feels like to be the food that she's always eating. <gasps> it's poetic! Why is he taking his shirt off every time? <laughs> oh god. No, one of his thingies. Hmm. So hair is her choice. They exploded! How long until that little hair furl is just casually fixed? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that escalated. Is his hair fixed? Nope, it's not. It's not gonna be till like next episode, isn't it? Do you think they'll she'll find anything with Asta's hair? Hmm. She's still creepy, but maybe she's enjoying helping people a little more. Where are we now? Is that Nozzle? Of course. They look like a silvery looking bird. Hmm.
a random village. Nice. Unfavorable things, eh? Oh, undercover, undercover outfits, please. Ah, they just put on cloaks. Oh no, they're gonna change, baby. Hmm. It's like a circle from above, right? Is it like some kind of crazy magic circle? It's gonna be one of those towns. Reminds me of a fairy tale episode. Maybe it has no significance. Yeah, look, it's like some kind of like symbol in the ground. <laughs> oh my god, Leon and Mark. What? <laughs> Just another time that Julius was going around disguised. Oh my god, it took you this long. No. Oh my god, he has no idea. He thinks one carrot is that much? Wow. Yeah, not not very undercover when you're handing out bags of cash. No. Y'all. Named him after him, wow. No. Nose. The the mayor of the village is called Mayor.
Hmm. Ooh. Something going down. Bandits. Jeez. No, that's the... That's the woman! Why are they doing this? This is the townsfolk. It's that one girl with the freckles. Yeah, the one guy with the scar. Damn. Just like had this sudden revelation as soon as they were caught by people stronger than them. How else? They can't take the mayor. How else will they find someone named Mayor to be the mayor? Oh, even people out here know the captains. I guess that makes sense. They gotta help restore the village. All of the villages in this area, not just this one. Okay. Mm. Nice. All right, that was fun. The first half of this episode was very different from the second half of this episode, but I liked both halves. I definitely felt like the, the second half was way more impactful, right? Like, from like a story perspective and a character perspective. Um... I mean, it was cool to see Sally again and for her to be seemingly enjoying helping people rather than, you know, the evil side she was on before. And it's helping develop her character a little bit, so if she shows up in the future, we're not like, and she's suddenly, like, very helpful, we're not like, well, I thought she was only, like, 
it's a little bit helpful. I thought she was more interested in dissecting people, but now we can see that she's starting to maybe like helping people. So if she shows up again in the future, it'll make sense. <laughs> All right. That is it, guys, for episode 140. Yeah, um, so we actually didn't follow a Black Bulls member this time. We just followed, uh, we kind of just followed Marks around a bit with his, uh, with his favors for, for Julius, which was pretty interesting. Um, I guess starting from the beginning, I think I have a lot more to talk about from the second half than the first half, but, uh... But I wonder if there's going to be any significance to Asta's hair being taken. I don't know. I had a theory, like, a while ago. Back when there was those villains in the snow uh, that were working for... I said villains. I, I just got done, like, binge rewatching My Hero because Season 6 is coming for My Hero and I wanted to be refreshed on everything, so... I said villain, which, I mean, I guess technically it can be seen as, as villains, but, like, the the bad guys that were in that cave that were stealing the children, they stole, like, Rebecca's children, or at least one of the children, and stuff like that, um, or I guess they're, they're Rebecca's siblings, not her children, uh, but, like, those, those people, they were working on something where they were sucking magic out of kids. I think they were doing it they mentioned, like, either they could do it, or they were doing it to the point where they, like, don't even have magic anymore, right? Um, and that gave me the, the theory of, like, what if that happened to Asta as a, as a baby, right? Like, what if there was some experiment done that either put a block on his magic, or, like, removed it entirely, and, like, I never went back to that theory because they haven't really given anything to, to like, hint towards that anymore from, from their past or, or whatever. But, uh, or at least not anything that I picked up on. There very well could be hints all over the place kind of thing. But, uh, but with Sally here taking some of Asa's hair, is it possible that she discovers something? Especially because a lot of the times you can tell things from hair now... I don't know, it probably wouldn't make sense that it would go all the way back. Like, I don't know the science-y kind of stuff, but, like, usually, like, different changes in your body can have, like, a different effect on your hair and its growth and the the way that it grows and, and everything. So, like, at least from the point of his last haircut would be kind of, like, where that range would be. So it wouldn't go all the way back to him being a child, right? I don't think so. But it is anime. They could probably do whatever they want, and it's, you know, a weird magic science, so who knows. Um, I, I was just curious if it would come back, or if it's just like, oh, we need to settle that score of, of Asta needing to allow Sally to do some kind of experiment. We'll just cut off a little thing of hair, and I imagine next episode, like, I imagine it's not going to be like, a bunch of episodes while Asta regrows that hair that he has that little bit gone. I, I firmly believe, mm, uh, from my experience, uh, from my experience in anime, I have a feeling that she's, uh, his hair is going to be back to normal in the next episode. But, uh, but yeah, definitely very, very interesting little moment of of her coming in and doing these experiments, right? Um. Other than that, I mean, she's working on a magic item The I, I kind of missed. I think I was writing something down at the very first line when they talked about, like, Sally's working on a magic item. Was she trying to recreate the magic item that was in the lava area? Did they say that? In the, in the volcano zone that they were in that boosted up the spider like crazy? Uh, because she called it, like, a dark magic item, and I know that one broke, so, uh, I don't know if they said it, but I wonder if that was, like, kind of her trying to recreate that, but either way, interesting. 
Um, I definitely like the second half a bit more. Uh, and, and I've already kind of mentioned the the parts of Sally of her, you know, starting to enjoy helping people rather than hurting people with her research. And, and that was really cool. And it's really cool that she, you know, for the most part, honored her uh, agreement with Asta and not and not hurting anyone with her research. And like, sure, she overcharged their magic and they like exploded, but they were all fine, you know, so. Um, but but yeah, that was uh that was pretty cool to see. Uh, as I was talking about in the beginning, the seeing characters grow is is always fun because you know a lot of our characters have a lot of these little quirks about them, and not all of them need to change, right? But having some of them change, like Noelle still has her well, I'm royalty, right, kind of thing. Um, but now she can actually hit her shots, whereas before she wasn't able to land a single shot, kind of thing. And it was really cool, like, obviously it's been a while since she's, like, had that problem, right? But I don't know why, but seeing it this episode, maybe it's because it was the same water ball she was shooting out, like, towards the beginning of the show, um, that she would always miss and they'd swerve off in, in random directions and stuff like that. Um, maybe that's why it gave me that feeling, but it just, it just made me think about it here in this episode, so, um... So yeah, and Asta, I don't know if he's gotten stronger, it's kind of hard because he's just like swinging his anti-magic sword at stuff, but like the way he, I guess like the, the biggest indicator would have been the the slice that cut the sea god dragon thingy majiggy that I'm forgetting exactly how it's worded, but uh, that moment he swung so hard that he sent like shockwaves like back at Noel and everything, which was... Uh, which was seemingly pretty impressive. Uh, I don't know if he could do that before, and that's just to be like, look how strong he is now kind of thing, but still pretty neat. But yeah, and then we went into the, the undercover. I was a little disappointed that they didn't put on like better outfits, like Nozzle taking his hair down or something would have been pretty cool, and and all that, uh, and putting on like peasant clothes or, or something like that would have been would have been awesome, but... They just had cloaks on, which was a little disappointing. I wanted to see... Like, I... I gotta admit, I really like Nozzle's character now. But I still think that, like, braid that goes down the front of his face is just stupid looking, in my opinion. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I just don't like the design. Uh, I remember thinking of how weird it looked when I first saw him. Um, but... <clears throat> but back then, I hated him. And now I like him. So it's like, uh, I imagine he would look incredibly handsome if he, like, took that down and his hair was flowing. It reminds me of whenever, like, uh, uh, it, that, that kind of thing happened with the sound Hashira in Demon Slayer, right? Like, he has his, his hair is always, like, back and everything, but then he let it down when he went into the entertainment district and, and all that. So that was kind of funny. Um... So I thought it'd be kind of, kind of fun here to see that, but but no, uh, they they use the name Chronovala, which is the apparently the name that uh when when uh Julius is going undercover as the old lady, he uses that name, and that's and he came to this village and just helped. I, I love how he is like the wizard king. He's like, you know, at this point he's full-on royalty so he should have that smug royalty personality that everyone has and even though Fugolian and Nozzle have done better about relinquishing that and they've started to really care for a lot of people they're still ignorant to a lot of things too and I love that uh I love that Yulia still goes around and I mean maybe not now that he's in a small form maybe he can't but before he'd He'd go around even to these small villages and just spend time with these people. It's it's just amazing, uh, and I I love I love Ulysses' character. Like I'm, I'm still like I feel like the moment of his death is a little wasted now because it was such an impactful moment and it made me pretty emotional and everything. And then suddenly it's like oh no I'm not dead you know. But I, there is the other side of me that's like really happy that he's still here you know. 
Um, but yeah, so they they went to this village. It, it was called that, right? It, a random? Like, it, it's all like, it was spelt as one word, but I love how the village is just a random village, right? Uh, it was... Did I get subtitles for this? It looks like some kanji pops up. Yeah, 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 there we go. Forsaken Realm, a random village. Yeah, it literally is a random village, but just a random is one word. That's that's so funny. I love when shows do stuff like this, and then, uh... Like, I have to imagine that that's, like, intended as, like, a joke for this episode, right? And then the... Especially with the mayor of the village being called Mayor, like M-A-Y-E-R, rather than M-A-Y-O-R. It's so funny. I didn't catch any of the other people's names. I guess I'll, uh, the only other name that I really remember being told is the, the baby's name, right? Uh, being Vala, because of Chrono Vala, who came and helped everyone, so... But... I just love, like, when, when they can do stuff like that. It reminds me of, uh, as I was saying before, I just got done watching My Hero Academia again, uh, binging through it, and I'm actually going to be starting Bleach here soon, which I'm, uh, like, I'm not going to be able to make it all through it again, but it's been, I probably should have started with Bleach rather than My Hero, because My Hero I've rewatched, you know, before the last season, which is a lot sooner than Bleach, which I haven't seen in, like, ten years. Um, but anyway... <clears throat> I'm gonna be rewatching Bleach in my own time because of the the new uh, stuff coming out. But anyway, uh, it reminds me of when they're doing their provisional license exams and they have to do the rescue stuff, and they're like insert city name here kind of thing as the is what they just like threw in there for the city name and uh, and stuff like that. There was like little little things like that during that too, and in a lot of anime do that too for like the little. The little side things where they're like, eh, it's not super serious. We don't need to give it like a, a a real a real big deal of a name, but but yeah. Anyway, I like that they gave these people money. Like, granted, they turned out to be bandits. I mean, they're doing it to save their village and and everything, right? So like, I feel for them, and especially because it was that you know they didn't get help from the capital and everything. It was just. <clears throat> I guess everyone was just so busy fixing the capital, and, and probably they still are trying to fix the capital and everything. They didn't really do a scout to all these different places off in the in the boonies and everything. Um, they, I mean, I'm pretty sure they even said in this episode that they eventually meant to like get out here and do this kind of thing, but they just didn't. And uh, I like that they came out here themselves and. It's a lot easier to neglect something when you're not seeing the effects of your neglect, right? And so it's a lot easier for them to just be in their mansions and be like, Ah, oh, yes, we will get around to that eventually. No big deal. But then when you come here and you see these families and you see these people struggling and and everything, it, it definitely changes your your viewpoint, and you can't just ignore it anymore. And I like that Fugolian just gave, like, a bag of cash, and he's just like... Uh, is this enough? And it's like, that's too much. <laughs> he's like, okay, you can just keep the rest and fix the village. And they're like, oh, wow, really? Although then they just went and tried to rob them even more <laughs> after getting all that, you know? You'd think you'd just be happy with what you were given from these people and and not go and try to steal from them as well. But just go steal from the next people, right? But But, yeah. I wonder if that was part of Fugolian's plan. Was was part of Fugolian's plan to show that these people have money in in the hopes that they'd be targeted by the bandits? Or was that just a happy coincidence kind of thing? Um, not sure, but... But I do like that, you know, from it, the, they are trying to, you know, redeem those people. They're restoring their village, so they won't need to do this bandit stuff anymore, hopefully, and... They're also restoring all the surrounding villages and everything, and I imagine they're going to be branching out at, like, once they're done this, they're going to look for other villages that might need this too, because they said all the villages, all the surrounding villages, but there's going to be, like, more, right? This area is, like, 
big, uh, like the it's a whole country, right? So, uh, uh, granted, not every vill I can't imagine every village was rampaged by the eye of the midnight sun, right? There's gonna be some that were that were fine, but, um, but yeah, I'm sure this is kind of it's kind of like them wrapping everything up from from that and and seeing some more of the villages get fixed and and stuff like that. So very cool. I very much enjoyed it. So, yeah. Uh, poor, uh, poor Julius just wants to go out and just go around like he usually does so badly, but he he can't. Uh, it's real too bad. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Check out my Patreon if you want to see more from me. Link in the description below, or it should be popping up on the screen. You can get access to shows that aren't even released yet on there, or my early access tier, where you can see two of these episodes ahead of time, and, and all kinds of goodies. Uh, I just watched uh, Star Wars Episode Two, and that's on there as a Patreon show for now. That'll probably be coming to YouTube a little sooner than the rest of the stuff uh, that's on there, but... Uh, I put it up there for now because I'm kind of in a transition period waiting for Mob Psycho Season 3 to start another Patreon show. So I think also this coming week I'll be watching uh, Episode 3 as well and uh, trying to get through some of these movies while I have the time because, as I mentioned before, once once Bleach and all that gets started, it's, it's going to be pretty crazy. Because um, I'm going to be watching uh, Mob Psycho Season 3, uh, which is just taking the Patreon show slot... So it's not really adding a slot for that one. Uh, I'm going to be watching My Hero Academia, which I guess you could consider being my airing slot, taking the place of Maiden Abyss. Um, but then that's all my slots filled that I normally do. And I also want to watch Bleach and uh, Chainsaw Man. So that's going to be two extra. I guess it's only four in total. It, it felt like more. Um, there is a fifth one, but I don't think I can. I don't think I can fit in three extra shows, right? But, uh... But yeah, there's, uh... Oh, what was it called? Uh, Fumetsu. That's getting a season two. And I love season one, so... I really want to watch it, but I think I just have to hold off. It looks like the following season doesn't even have, like, a single show. So I'll probably try to watch Fumetsu in the following season, rather than, uh... Rather than this coming one. But anyway, uh, that's... I don't know what I'm rambling about anyway. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying all this. You guys will see all of it pop up, but thank you guys so much. That's it for me. Uh, I've already said my whole spiel. Just thank you for watching. All right. See you guys. Bye.